station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Station is ready. Space Center Houston, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is astronaut Leland Melvin here with NASA social participants at Space Center Houston. How do you hear me? Hey, Leland, got you loud and clear. You guys sound great. So, hey, Peggy, my uh, former commander, you know, but you'll be taking that commander role pretty soon. So congratulations. And Shane, you guys are doing a great job. Uh, we're going to take a few questions. So you guys ready to queue up for some questions? Absolutely. We're always ready. All right. Here we go. Okay. Peggy, Shane, I know you can't see me. Well, let me get this up a little higher. How you doing up there? <laughs> You're up there somewhere, right? This is uh, Tony Saragusa from Yahoo. And uh, obviously the first boring question is going to be your prediction for the game that my producer told me I have to ask. I would never ask that, but we would like to know that down here on Earth. Well, I'm from Atlanta, so I'm picking the Falcons uh, 30 to 24. Straight up, or are you going to give the three points? <laughs> Straight up. Come on. Straight up. Okay. Uh, the second question, I went, uh, being from New Jersey, uh, you know, I had a couple of people on uh, Twitter and Facebook and all those things ask me, and the majority of the guys were from New Jersey, and they want to know, how do you guys call your bookie actually to put your bets in? And if you lose, how do they collect? Uh, we'll keep that a secret. <laughs> okay. And that's uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you for uh, inviting us all, all having a great time, and uh, hopefully you get back to your family safe uh, when your time is up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, Space Station. It's Caroline here from the BBC. I don't know how I follow the comedian. Maybe it's the proper questions that the BBC ask. Uh, just going to ask you, I'm kidding. Just going to ask you, Space Station, whether you've got control of that big lump of metal and whether you can guarantee you have the best seat in the house come Sunday above the stadium in Houston. Well, I wish we could park it above the stadium and just kind of watch from that perspective, but we can't do that. We're going to be moving at 17,500 miles an hour, whether we want to or not. Uh, but we will have the game live up here, so we'll get to watch it. And just one final question from me. I wonder if you could give us a Houston, we have a Super Bowl, and show us your touchdown celebration. <laughs> All right, Houston, we have a Super Bowl. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hi, Robert from CollectSpace.com. Um, so you mentioned that you're going to watch the game live. Uh, I understand it's after you go to we were supposed to go to sleep, so that means you'll be staying up. So are you preparing any uh, Super Bowl snacks for the game? Super Bowl snacks. So I haven't thought too much about it yet, but we'll come up with something special. Uh, luckily, though, we did get the morning off after, since it's going to be the middle of the night. Hi, I'm a little shorter. Hi, I'm Ann Brennan with Ann's Running Commentary. Um, my readers are all about looking for the next workout. So my question for you is, how are you working out in space and what's your favorite workout that you get to do up there? All right, we have some great machines up here. One is called A-RED, Advanced Resistive Exercise Device. And it's a machine that we can do pretty much everything you can do on Earth, from squats to bench press to triceps to upright rows. Whatever you want to do, you can do it on that machine. And we can carry loads up to about 600 pounds, so definitely more than I will reach. And Peggy will probably approach that <laughs> limit, but I won't. Um, but it's a great machine. We work out about an hour a day on that. And then we have an hour of cardio or so a day. So we have a stationary bike, which is to my left that you can't see. And we have a treadmill as well. So 
Peggy usually does all three of those. We call it a triathlon uh, for her workout every day. Uh, I usually do, do one of the aerobics and the ARED device um, for my workouts every day. Awesome. Thank you. Hi, I'm Shannon Younger, and I write for a lot of families and a lot of kids who play sports. And I was wondering if you could tell me how you think space flight is a lot like a team sport. Well, teamwork is actually incredibly important to us uh, at NASA in general. It's uh, important in small groups like the group that we have up here, but uh, more importantly, it's actually a uh, fantastic relationship that we have with uh, ground teams all over the world. That teamwork is, is very, very special to us. I think also athletics provide you a way to test yourself physically and mentally and uh, which I think is good training for jobs like we have. Thanks so much. Hello, I am Siam Proctor from South Mountain Community College, and I want to know if you could play football on the moon or Mars, which would you choose? <laughs> Well, I've always wanted to go to the moon, so I think I'd pick the moon, um, just because that's uh, when I was a little kid, I was grew up watching the Apollo astronauts walking on the moon, and I always had that as a dream, so I would choose that. I'd vote for I Mars. Vote. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hello, I am PR, Christina. I do uh, social media and things like that. And my question is, what has been the most unexpected thing um, that has happened to you since you have left Earth? That's a good question. We're having to think about that one. Uh, a lot of the stuff we did expect um, and we were trained for. I'm trying to, uh, we, had, we had a couple malfunctions early on. As soon as Peggy and her crew arrived, we had a little malfunction with the bathroom. And that was probably the biggest unexpected thing. And uh, it took all of our work about a whole day to make sure that got fixed. Any embarrassing stories you want to share with the rest of us down here? <laughs> No, we just, well, with that, that situation, we just had a big uh, nasty leak in the system, so we had to take care of it. Thank you. Hi, Valerie Stimmick here. Good afternoon. Um, I know you just passed over Patagonia, which is beautiful from our view down here on Earth, but I'm curious what your favorite site is from orbit. Actually, Patagonia is one of my favorite sites, and it's incredible, but it's actually very hard to actually get good views because it tends to be weathered in a lot. So when we do get a great view, then we get to take some really phenomenal uh, pictures or get to see the glaciers that, uh, and the beautiful different colored lakes in the area. Uh, the Caribbean is also incredibly beautiful with the colors. Uh, you can actually see the, the fingers of the coral reefs underneath, and that's just uh, stunning as well. Uh, I also love uh, the differences in like Northern Africa, the peach color of the sands. Uh, it makes the whole light coming in the station kind of glow. And every, every country's got some unique uh, aspects to it that make it very, very beautiful. So it, it's just fun no matter where you are looking out the window. Thank you. Uh, how you doing? My name is Marty Cannon. I'm a teacher and a coach at, uh, in Lafayette, Louisiana. And my question is about your nutritional needs on a daily basis compared to uh, when you're back on Earth. So what is your diet like now compared to what you would usually have uh, back on Earth? Thank you. Yeah, great question. Um, and it's a huge part of our health up here. Um, if we don't eat you know, the proper amount of calories and work out, like I mentioned before, then we're gonna lose bone mass, bone density, and muscle mass. So we don't want any of those things to happen. So to help us uh, alleviate those problems, we're working out and we're trying to eat. They want me to eat about 3,000 calories a day. I'm eating all the time and I can't get to 3,000. So I'm trying, but it's really hard. Um, I think our portions are a little smaller up here, but I just feel like I'm eating all the time. So we're just not getting the exact calorie count that they're wanting me to get. So far, I haven't lost any mass. We have a mass measurement system up here where we about every month we measure ourselves. And uh, so far, I'm kind of holding steady, so that's a good thing. 
Hi, Peggy and Shane. This is Herb Baker. I actually just retired from NASA, but I can't stay away, obviously. Uh, so my question is about the uh, <clears throat> Bigelow uh, expandable module. Uh, have you guys spent any time in it, and is it passing all of its tests? Actually, Shane was in it once very early on in his mission, and uh, we're going to go in tomorrow, uh, as a matter of fact. We're doing some testing in there uh, and, and actually trying to assess if that, that type of hardware is going to be valuable for us in future missions, uh, whether it's building habitats on planets or uh, adding additional modules to space stations like this one. Thanks. Hi, I'm Alexandra Becker with the Texas Medical Center, and my question is, what are you doing on the International Space, Sa Space Station to help advance human health here on Earth? Actually, we're doing a number of different scientific investigations that I, I hope will also contribute to uh, human health uh, on Earth as well. Uh, we're doing uh, fluid shift studies, looking at, at how the fluids in our bodies shift and make changes in our bodies. In particular, we're concerned about some of the vision changes that we've seen uh, in astronauts, and we're trying to better understand that. Another study that I'm in is uh, looking at oxidative damage uh, as a result of in being in this environment, a microgravity environment, to look at long-term effects on the potential for cardiovascular disease. Using microgravity as a, a, a variable in the experimentation allows us to try and better understand some of the variables that we see on the ground. And hopefully those will contribute uh, to future uh, uh, prevention or understanding of disease on Earth as well. Good afternoon, Shane. Uh, Peggy, I want to ask and speak on a broad discussion about what you're doing aboard the International Space Station and how that is going to help us go to Mars and the moon as well. Thank you. Well, we're doing a lot of things, um, of course, trying to get there. All of our systems, our life support systems here, um, we're testing those out now for potentially going to places like Mars. Uh, we're a couple hundred miles off the Earth right now. Um, some of the systems aren't super critical for us, some are, and uh, we're glad they're working, um, but we do have a lot of redundancy on things that are really critical. But if you go to a place like Mars, which is millions and millions of miles away from the Earth, you really got to have those systems perform perfectly every time. So we're kind of hammering out a lot of those issues now with the regener uh, regeneration of liquid, um, whether that's urine or sweat or whatever it is on board that we can create into drinking water, things like that or kind of the technology we're going to take as we go towards Mars here in the next few decades. Hi, I'm Callie McPherson, and my question is, what was your first night in space like? Uh, let's see. I don't remember a whole lot of it. We got up here kind of in the middle of the night, so we had a few hours of work to do, and then we kind of just went to bed. Sleeping's a, a lot different up here, as you might imagine. Uh, but I really enjoy it. I think Peggy sleeps very well up here as well, so um, it's not a bad thing for us. We have a little small bedroom. It's kind of like a small closet where you can get in there, and that's kind of your private space, and that's where you, you put your sleeping bag on the wall and uh, go to bed every night. Hi, my name is Jessica Bolanos, a.k.a. Fancy Capitalist with Good Sparrow. And my question is, what is your favorite thing to do in space? There are so many things to do up here that I, I just truly, honestly, really enjoy doing. Uh, I love doing all the scientific research, being a scientist by background. I, I really love doing all the hands-on work uh, that's required of us. Uh, Shane and I have had an opportunity to do spacewalk already, and that's a very interesting men mental and physical challenge that I enjoy very much as well. And the view gets even better when you're outside uh, in a spacesuit. Uh, and of course, every day, any like I mentioned, uh, the views of Earth are incredible and beautiful and so varied that it's it's impossible to get tired of looking out the window. So. Everything that we do up here is a fun, and 
just being in zero gravity is, is so novel and unique that it, it every day feels special, and it really is. Hi Shane, hi Peggy, this is Kate Baker from the Science Fiction and Fantasy Writers of America. First of all, this is so cool. <laughs> Second of all, um, we would like to know as writers, because we're always looking for new information for our stories, what is it like when you come back to Earth? What is the adjustment like for the gravity? So Peggy will have a lot more experience than I do on this. I had a shuttle flight earlier in my career. Um, this is a lot different where I'm going to be up here for about six months. So my body will adjust a little differently. Um, but it, it took me a few days, two or three days after my shuttle flight for my kind of my equilibrium to kind of settle out and for me to feel pretty decent. I think hopefully it'll be about the same just because of the workout program we're on is going to help a lot. And uh, I'm hoping it's not going to be a, a week or two, but uh, we'll see. Everybody's a little bit different. And some, some folks get sick coming uphill, getting and being in space, and some folks get sick going downhill, and I'm, I'm the kind that gets sick going downhill, so returning home for me is a lot more challenging than coming up to space. I adapt much quickly, more quickly coming up instead of going down. Uh, but it, it does last for several days. Uh, the first 24 hours after I returned on my first flight, I was pretty sure I needed to go back to space because I didn't really want to be on Earth anymore. <laughs> Good morning, Peggy. Good morning, Shane. Uh, my name is Sandy Max. I'm from Milwaukee, uh, Milwaukee PBS and also radio, WKLH. Thrilled to be part of NASA Social, and this is like the ultimate long distance call. So thank you for your time today. We are all just super crazy excited to be here. And the fun thing about social media is I asked a lot of people like, well, I'm your eyes and ears. What would you want to ask? So my friend Harvey wanted to know, what is the brightest light, natural or man-made, that you can see from the ISS that's on Earth? It's a stumper. <laughs> Sorry, we're trying to figure that one out. That's a great question. Um, yeah, the, most of the big bright lights are in, in big cities, so there's nothing that stands out to me that I've seen that I'm like, oh yeah, that's that light or whatever. Uh, but it's all man-made, of course. The city as a whole kind of looks like, you know, the bigger ones are brighter than others. Um, sorry, I can't answer that one completely. I'm kind of proud of myself. Stumped the, uh, stumped the ISS astronauts. Thanks so much. Keep up the great work. Buenos dias, ISS. Me llamo Eduardo Ruskowski. Good morning, ISS. I'm blessed to have the last question of the day here, but first I want to mention that I grew up in a small town north of Pittsburgh, where another football dynasty happens to uh, reside, and I played high school football, but soon learned when I graduated that uh, sports was not for me, and in the aerospace and sciences were, and I got into that. So I'm a space cadet, and that uh, is the basis for my question, which is the last question today. Last week, NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory photographed a large canyon-shaped hole that opened in the sun's atmosphere. It's spewing a stream of solar wind directly toward Earth and ISS. It is said that such a fast-moving stream is sure to spark Arctic auras. It arrives today, by the way. My, my question is, uh, are there or were there any cautions taken by ISS in front of its arrival? Uh on board the space station, the ground will notify us if we need to uh, take precautions, go to some of the safe areas on, on board the station, safer areas, more shielded areas if we need to. Um, the auroras can be incredibly beautiful when they show up, so there's the positive side of that. Uh, we haven't seen any great ones on this mission, but I have seen some on previous missions, and uh, they're amazing to see. All right, Shane and Peggy, that wraps it up. We are so proud of what you're doing to help advance the civilization and inspire our next generation. Thank you so much and really enjoy the game. And Peggy, if you could, send Shane on a down and out.
Thank you, guys. We really appreciate what you do. Godspeed. Have a great rest of your mission. Thanks, everyone. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes our event. And for Mission Control Houston, thanks for all the participants there at Space Center Houston. Really fun event, great questions. And station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.